episode 11. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Energy's better than 10. <laughs> Nine and 10 was a little. Oh, man, it's a rough day. <laughs> Today's better. Mm-hmm, much better. We got a lot done today. Just came off, came off a couple weeks ago. So we're tired. It was a lot of work, but super rewarding. Yes. Tired, but excited. So the excitement will balance. I don't know. I'm good. What are we talking about today? I can't. Okay. It's the time of the year. Yeah. It's like this is the busiest year. Yeah, it is. It is. People know that, though. But We've been getting volunteers to that, which is nice. We got so many volunteers this year, but it's extra special because our coordinated efforts around getting volunteers worked. Worked. And had the opposite problem, which was how many volunteers is there enough for them to do? Right. To keep us in the work. Yeah, we found things to do. We yeah, could always. With projects that have been deferred projects for a really long time. Some of those, and also the, they were mopping floors, floors, cleaning windows. Cleaning windows cleaning shelves, it's amazing. Cleaning out corners. <laughs> Put uh, uh, taking shelves down with stuff, wiping shelves that were already clean, <laughs> and then putting it back. It was a good thing, but then it did, it, look, it looked neat. Er, when they when they did that, so I, I was. I was just, I was giving them busy. I was giving them something to do and it made, it was all good. It made it better. Well, this is aligned because the topic of today uh, is black service standard of excellence. And I think it's really relevant to talk about also because when we're so busy Mm -hmm. and people have to understand when we say we're so busy, it doesn't mean there's a line around the corner of coffee customers. It Which has happened too, so, but go ahead. Doesn't always mean that. I understand what you're saying. That's not what we're meaning. Yeah, what we're right. saying is when we're so busy and we're firing all, on all cylinders, right? We have multiple locations going, we have multiple history museums going, all of which we're going to talk about in our expansion in the next episode. But it's also uh, the, the giving is on the 10th power, you know, we, we're. We're at, as we close up this week, we'll have met over 10,000 people in the next month. Yeah. Uh, hitting you know, our goal of, you know, the, of people, 10, <laughs> the people campaign. Right. Um, and yet, the thing that we always go back to is quality of service, the standard of service, the black standard of service, you know, is like a mantra. We go over and over and over again with the staff about. No matter what is what? happening, no matter what we're going through, we have got to be delivering a 10 out of 10 experience every single time. Not- any, any conversation, any moment, any interaction, any exchange, it has to be at this level that I really feel like we're on the forefront of like pioneering customer service, but in a way that's rooted in community and connection. And caring. <laughs> community and connection and caring. Yeah. Um, so it's funny you, you brought that up because it's like, I want to, not I, we want to make sure that, just like you said, the, the, the excellent service, it comes down to how you pack the rice. You know, do you just throw it in there and wrap the bag all funny? Um, no, you take time, you make sure it's not, you make sure that it's not going to burst when you put it inside the bag. Those those little things, I mean, some of the folks think think I'm nuts when I'm going around and I'm saying, hey, remember to do this, remember to do that. But that's all about, that's all about uh, quality service to me. Yeah. It's like, even though, even though the bag is free for the person that's, excuse me, receiving it, it's free to them, shouldn't be any less than if they paid a million dollars for that bag, so. Right, so I'm going to go into some specifics about some specific things that we do oriented to this uh, Slack service standard of excellence, but go ahead. can you talk about just generally why it's important? Like you said, you know, no matter if it's free or a million dollars, it should be the 
same level. Like, why is that so important? Why is it so important, like, for us? Why do you think yeah. it's, like, the center yeah, of what yeah. we do? I, what, the reason I, I think it's the, in, the, in the core, in the, in the center of what we do um, is because our folks deserve it in this community. They, you know, I, from day one, I've always been saying that, you know, because people walk into our place and they go, wow, this is beautiful. And they're all surprised and shocked and, you know, thinking someone out of the community did it for, did it and didn't, and, you know, didn't invite them and they just happened to, you know, wander in. No, this is, this is for this, this is what we deserve. This is what we're supposed to have. It's like, you know, uh, the other communities, you know, you know, mimic us or copy us, but we're supposed to, we're supposed to, or I should say, we should get back to expecting it to be this way. Yeah, I think that it's like the chicken or the egg thing of like, where did it start from? But I think sometimes urban communities and neighborhoods get a trap for um, the service being bad. Everything was janky, um, janky. Everything being janky, or people will be like, you know, we can't even buy from our own people, you know, that kind of thing, which I'm not going to unpack that right now. That's not really important <laughs> to unpack, but I know that that's a perception, right? Some people feel that way. If they're not from the community, they're like, oh, you know, the service is bad there, or if they're from the community, oh, the service is bad there. And it's this thing of like, uh, you know, not only retraining the community, but retraining our employees who are from the community of, you know, the, the, the people who come into the cafe and back, we're retraining them of you're worthy, you deserve this, this is the type of experience that you should have, this is the type of experience that other people are having, you know, also. Uh, and then for our employees, we're trying to explain to them this is the type of service we should give. This is what these people are worthy of. Right. You are a part of this community and you are an embodiment of an example of what is possible for our community. And we want you to be so excited. Wow. About this opportunity. You, when I do that, you're hitting it on the head, honey. Wow. <laughs> so, and what's coming to mind is a story that I don't think we told so far, but that is, is not something I want you to tangent on, but if you could just touch on is your experience growing up as a child and um, eating needing food and being with your mom in the food line, right? And oh my so god, the I did talk about that. The experience that you had in terms of service, thinking about your oh, service okay. experience, and the reason that you took what you went through and how you applied it to how we approach our food distribution service that we do. <clears throat> That's a, that I, I, that's to the heart. Um, wow. Where do I begin? Well, well I want to mention something before, before I go into that. I'm going to try to make it a little lighter. Cause that's a deep one for me. Um, why do I have hot and you have cold? You requested hot and I told you it was very hot outside and you still wanted hot and you're very stubborn. So if I tell you, you should get ice. You just double down on the heat. But I do. But it's actually say, really good. I do just want to say that I have at least eleven things on here to talk about related to our service. So I was, Whoa. I was wanting you to tell Slow me down. this story just as an anecdote, not okay. just the whole episode. Well, the anecdote part of this is that I really, you know, feel feel that it's important that people are treated well in this in this particular food line, ours. I think it should be treated in every food line, not just ours, but the, I'm here. And as long as I'm around, because of what I experienced as a child, because I was in those lines with my mom and I hated it. And I remember I hated it the more we went. First time I went, I was excited, but we were treated so bad. I mean, we were treated as if, here's your cheese. You know, doggone cheese was good. I, you know, I used to slice one slice of it and put it on a piece, but that wasn't the point. I was, we were there to get food. We, and, and yeah, it was free, but did we, did we need to be treated like we were second class citizens? No, but we were. And 
oftentimes the ladies, the people, hey, most of the time it was ladies, um, <laughs> were just mean. Just like, you know, get over here, yelling at people. And it just, it just didn't feel, didn't feel good. So I vowed <laughs> that because once this line became so popular with us, I, I saw myself in the line with, the, with these people. I said, I'm not going to let them have the experience that I had. This is going to be a great place. It's going to be a, we're going to play music. We're going to go up and greet each other. We're going to say hi. There's going to be friends in this line. And uh, they're going to be my friends. And all, of, and all of our staff and volunteers and are they, lock and step with the understanding same. of the kindness and respect that they show to us. Absolutely. And when every now and then we'll get a volunteer that, you know, misses that mark a little bit and we pull them to the side. I mean, it's, it's beautiful to see. Even the staff goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. We don't talk to people like that. This is how, you know, maybe here you go inside and, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty right. awesome to see. Right. Our staff is on it. Right. So thanks for sharing that, babe. I just wanted, because I, I think when we were doing the episode talking about food, deserts and food insecurity, that we didn't. I'm not sure that we even that part of the why behind what we do. Um, but, you know, I wanted to. Why we do it is because it's the need. This, the, how we do it, I think is what you mean. We do it with care. We do it with empathy. Compassion. Yeah. Kindness. Okay. So that's giving some context to the conversation, but we talk a lot about like the slack way and the slack way applies to everything that we've talked about on all these episodes. It's our overall, you know, philosophy, our overall why, our overall mission and values and vision and, you know, all of the things that we're talking about is the Right. It's, right. Our, it's our special sauce of right. way. But our service, our service is something that we are known for. I think you and I take so much pride in it. I got to admit, it's one of the things we don't play about is we are going to give excellent service every single time. And if we ever do not, it is not okay. Right. Um, if we ever have a customer co- contact us and tell us about a negative experience, which is few and far between, thank God. Mm-hmm. Um, we take it so seriously, like we're on it immediately. You and I will call them. We'll talk through it. Call them personally. We'll, you know, do what we got to do to make it right. We'll have meetings with our staff immediately. I've had people say to me, I can't believe you're the owner and you took the time out of your day to call me and talk about this. And I go, uh, doesn't everybody? Yeah. I, I would think, but. I think part of it also getting back to the why of why we take our customer service so seriously and why we're so responsive is because we understand that we are a local, small family, women and black owned small business, which means with a a, a lot of celebrity, local celebrity status, but go ahead. I just want to throw that in. Our celebrity status won't keep our doors open. No, I'm just adding that. We know that that is there. Go ahead. Okay. For those listening in, maybe by the end of this season, you'll see maybe <laughs> Joe will wait and let me deliver my amazing point because I'm leading. I, when, when I start and then you stop it right midway, I don't get the delivery of that the you wanted. message that I was leading up to. I know where okay. I'm going with the sentence and okay. then I never get there because it doesn't have the same. When that changes, folks, it'll it'll be less exciting. <laughs> when that changes, folks, who will be old and gone. <laughs> yes, because it's hard for me. Don't hold your but breath. go. Well, I'll try. <laughs> I'll try. Go. What I and, and I still haven't gotten into this list of things to talk about, but I just wanted to say that well, this is part of the overarching theme that I'm hoping that we're getting through all of our episodes that we're talking about so far is. The structures are set up for us to fail. It is a very, very, very hard thing to have a successful small business. And when I say successful, I mean sustainable. Right. One that actually has profitability, is actually purpose-driven, is actually people-centered, uh, and can last and stand the test of time. And, you know, in theory, scale into other, you know, businesses or replicate their model, Right. That's the goal, but the structures that exist, you know, are based in inequity 
and are not designed for people like you and me to make it. Right. And our society, our, our culture, our community has been sort of brought into being complicit in this. Right. right. They in being like, oh, we love you, but we also will hate you in one second. Yeah. You know what I mean? We love you. It's like I, I it's like I did this one live where I was like, okay guys, I'm over here at um <laughs> we go over on Boston, and the line is around the corner for the Starbucks over here. And we're literally five blocks away. Like, why don't you guys come on over to our Starbucks? I mean, come on over to our South LA Cafe. But the thing about it is, like, if they have a terrible experience, like, why is everybody going to Starbucks? It's not because the coffee's good, right? Uh, it's convenient. But the, it's not because the service is great. It's just convenient, right? But beyond that, they could have a terrible experience at Starbucks and go back tomorrow. You know what I mean? Gotta get my coffee. They go to South LA Cafe and have a terrible experience at South LA Or not even a terrible one. A, 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 something went wrong. One little thing went wrong. Go ahead. I'm sorry. But if they go to again. South LA Cafe and they have a similar type of experience, you know, now they want to cancel us or you know i'm never going back there again or see i tried to support or those people oh my or God. whatever it is right so it's one of those things where it's like all of us all of us together are going through a um separation from the programming of these these uh societal uh structures that are telling us like you know oh let's like basically driving us to corporations right being like you don't need that good of anything. You don't need personal attention. You don't need real people running this company. All you need is convenience. All right? you need is a drive-through. All you need is a drive-through. And so all that to be said, I think you and I know at the end of the day from when we open up the cafe that we had to be flawless. Right. We had to have excellent customer service because all, all we, we always tell the staff, all you get is one chance to make that first impression. And because they can go anywhere that they want, and, you know, when we first opened, we just started with this one location. So they chose to come here. And, and from far, it's most what, of them. Whether they're near or far, mm -hmm. they chose to come here. This might be the one and only time they come. Right. Or it might be the hundred times that they come. And you have the opportunity to make or break that. And so when we get into our standard of excellence, that's where we talk about blowing their mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Having the wow experience. Creating such a freaking phenomenal, uh, like un, un, unearthly like experience. Where you have that sixty seconds, people. This is your this is your turn to take to take care of the customer to make them feel like it's a home. Um, I, dang, I cut you off again. But I had a guy meeting me at the cafe, not coming there as a customer. You know he. I, I just, I, my meeting spot is my cafe. So yeah. I had him meet me there. And when he came in and when I was having the interview or the, uh, the meeting with him, he talked about, never been here before, talked about how welcome he felt when he walked in the door. Okay, we'll pause. So that's number one. So what I want to get into is what, uh, what, let me pull it back one more step. I continue to say what you and I are doing is not happening. This is not an accident that we stumbled into. This is day in and day out intentionality and strategy happening. We're constantly checking in about everything that happens, whether it's with customers, whether it's with partners, whether it's with our staff, and we're pivoting constantly, right? So everything that we do, when we train our staff on our, um, Black service standards of excellence, it is based in an actual process, an actual formula that we are teaching. And the first step of all steps is the welcome. Right. Okay. So if anybody has been to our cafe and has not walked through that door and heard the entire chorus <laughs> of our staff stop in their tracks what they're doing and say, hi, welcome in. How are you? Or something like that. You better freaking send us an email, okay? Please do. You know, please please do. No, because that is one thing that we train up and down, all around every single person. I do not care what is happening, how many customers you have, 
When a new customer walks through that door, they should be greeted. We greet them. We welcome them. Now, now, why is that important? What, what do you mean? Why is that important? It's, it's, it's one of the reasons I built the place or wanted to have a coffee shop is so that not only me, but my community would feel welcome. I mean, I got tired of going other places um, outside of my community and not getting to just the opposite of that. Right. I mean, literally, um, almost what are you doing here? Right. You know, so, so anyway. So much so that you may not have been to a lot of institutions or small businesses where you felt welcome. Right. So that might seem like the norm. Right. right? Is that kind of treatment that you almost subconsciously have gotten to accept because you haven't had something different. But we want our experience to be so shockingly different <laughs> that it stands out, right? So that's one what thing does? That, that's one thing that we do is we walk them. Uh, the next thing is is actually making a connection. So let's say you walk in the cafe, you get that welcome. You come up to the register, right? Now it's supposed to be an actual connection, right? You're so for our team, we tell them, look, you don't just stand there and wait for the customer to talk to you. You also don't just say, how can I help you, right? You have to first make a soul-to-soul connection with the person. And that's going that extra mile. That's something that's going to make them go, oh, wait a minute. This is interesting. I know I was going through something today, or I know, you know, I got things on my mind, but this person took a moment and it could be as simple as we say, like, it could be, they're wearing a t-shirt. Oh, I love your Barack Obama t-shirt. Like, where yeah. did you get that? Or And genuinely, like really look at it and, and don't just find, I mean, you know, don't do the, don't, yeah, don't do the ugly, don't do the ugly sweater thing. You know, that sweater is ugly and you go, oh, what a beautiful sweater. No, we don't do that. No, we say that's a beautifully ugly sweater. <laughs> no, I'm no, we don't. Okay, back it up. <laughs> what we try and tell them is <laughs> your example didn't fit. But <laughs> we try to tell them think about something that feels authentic to you. Right. But it can be superficial. It can be about your clothes. It can be about their hair. It can be about their earrings. It can be about whatever. But the point is, you're not just, it's not transactional. What we don't want, that's what you get at a Starbucks right. or somewhere else is that. How can I help you? Boom, get the order, get your order fast, buy your out. Now, don't get me wrong. I know people like that. There's a purpose and a place for that, but that's not what Slack brings to the table. We right. bring to the, the table, we're going to blow your mind. You're going right. to be like, whoa, this is a thing. Right. So we, we might do it fast sometimes when there's, you know, 17 people in line, but we still try to make the connection. Just want to put that out there. Yeah, of course we're trying Because we had the, we we had the bike to... thing just this weekend. See, yeah. Well, of course, we're trying to move fast. But and it was if, crazy. If anybody wants to come in and see all of these steps at work, when Joe and I are here, you'll watch Joe or myself on register or an Adam, you know, or other people from our team. You can go on and name a lot of them. Matthew, Marina, Marina. Matthew, Juan Carlos, Lenisa. These are people that are really good at this. this. So then from there, we go into, it's about communicating an educational opportunity. Right? So here's where we're going to go into creating that memorable cashier experience where we're going to, you know, go through telling them about our menu. Right. So this is also when we say, um, have you been here before? Uh, what do you normally like to order? Have you heard about our new specials? Right. You know, we're going the, the uh, above and beyond. We're telling them, uh, you know, Cause, go ahead. Because some people just want to come in and support. And don't really know, you know, what, what some people don't even drink coffee, to be honest, but they still want to come in because it's a nice little uh, spot in the hood that they've heard about. So, you know what, I'm gonna stop saying hood and I'm gonna go back to saying neighborhood because hood is when all the neighbors are gone. (laughs) Episodes later, I'll talk about that. That's really cool. I mean, not really cool, but a really cool thing to talk about. Because right. We can talk about that in the um, gentr- Gentrifier's Guide to South LA right. episode that's coming up. I don't even know if it fits that section, but we'll, we'll figure it out. It's something that just came up with that. You know me. Off the cuff. Off the cuff. Um, so now I'm still going through a cashier experience where we go into a few more things that we focus on with our standard of excellence. But um, 
you know, so the customer comes up, we're engaging with them, we're welcoming them, we're making an authentic connection with them, we're educating them, right? Yeah, right. We're informing them about our menu, about what we have to offer. Now they're putting their order in. We're making sure we get their order right, right? We actually are supposed to read the order back to them, you know, because we want them to know that we heard them. Yeah, we and got- we want to make sure we got the order right because that helps us. That prevents mistakes. That that creates a higher level of customer um, uh, satisfaction. That's another form of engaging. You don't have okay. to talk about their shirt. You can talk about the order they just put in. Yeah, but I'm saying, oh my yeah, God, I see you ordering matcha. It's, it's a layered yeah. thing. You do talk about their shirt, then you talk about something else, then you talk about something else, and by the time they got it, they've gotten you know five to six to seven different touch points that they're not getting anywhere else, and it may be completely intangible that they don't even know what they got and why they had why they got to get, but they know they feel good when they yeah. leave. Yeah. But and and that's one of those things where people are just like, you know what? I don't, I don't know what I like about that place. But I know I like it. And but I'm I know I like back. it, and yeah. I want to come back. And then from there, you know, while we're we're completing the transaction and they're waiting for their order, then this is an opportunity to create a further level of engagement and and education with them. We're we're telling them about the background of the cafe. Right. 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 Uh, are you are you familiar with the cafe? You know that we're a mission-driven company. You know that the owners are local. They live five blocks away. You know, did you, you gotta know? stop telling people where I live. Go. I live in the neighborhood. Go. You can't keep interrupting and then say go. It doesn't work like that. You get, my brain doesn't work like that. You I just pause know? and put my thing in there, and then or I put my statement in there, and then you can go back to it. Okay. I, you know, I also I also want to mention that. You know, this works for, this is, I mean, we sh- I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to say it. This is for our staff, too. We have this in place. We're disengaging where they, it helps you with your memory when you actually find out things about people. You remember their name. You remember their drink. And so the next time they come in, you can see them walking in a thing. You can already know what they're going to get. So it, 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 this is. This is mainly for the customers, but it's also we snuck in there. You know, it helps train our staff, too. Yeah. So let me go through a few more of the steps to just get through the go cashier ahead. and customer experience. And then we're, I'm going to go into we're so some smart. Of the broader things. Um, you didn't hear that, did you? I said we're so smart. Go. You don't want me all tired like the last uh, episode. So here you go. You're getting Joe. Let's go. I'm trying, but don't keep telling me let's go. All right. Let me just get my thoughts together. You, you just need to listen. I like so, this shirt. I like this shirt. I like your jacket. You look so beautiful. I really hope that when people watch or listen to this, that they find us as entertaining <laughs> This must be. I'm like, oh my god! But let me. I'm sorry. Can I keep going? Yeah. For a second. Let me get to 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 your what is it? iPod or podcast mode? Ready? Go. Thirty minutes into the episode, you want to get into podcast mode? Yes. A little late for this one. Okay. Let let. I just want to get this rhythm though. Okay. That it's it's important for people to understand the rhythm. It's just like when we're training a new staff member, explaining the rhythm of the customer and cashier experience, right? So. We're telling them about the menu. We're getting their order. We're reading it back to them. Right now, as they're closing up the transaction, we're able to tell them a little bit more about the company, about the background, about our mission, about the food distribution, about all the cool things we have going on. And then we we ask them for their phone numbers so that they can get the rewards points. Right? We have a rewards program. Uh, it's one of the ways that we're able to engage them with the consent. Right? We don't scam them, but they get coupons, you know, $5 off, they get birthday coupons, they get all this stuff, and we set up customized text messages that are sent to people. It's not just the spam cookie cutter ones that come from the company that we work with. We literally sat there and thought about what would Joe and Celia say when we send these things to customers. Then we say to them, hey, if you're a brand new customer, we have a gift for you, right? We send them over to our 
gift bowl of buttons <laughs> and they're able to take as many buttons as they want, you know, and they're all, you know, either I love South LA or, or I love South, South they're LA. All their, LA they're all their little things. Or magic or whatever they are, but it's a gift from us. And then we ask them in exchange for getting that gift, could they please complete their new customer form, right? And that's just, just them giving their name, right. email, and phone number if they want, and they're popping it in the, the little container there for us. But and like, now we've come up with, next to that, is uh, give us a suggestion. We have a little suggestion form you can fill out. It's pretty cool. And that's for everybody. That's not just for, for new customers. So just throw that, throw that out there. That's our new little item. Okay. And the reason that this is important is because we talked about this in earlier episodes about when COVID hit and people did not have their customers' information. They had no way to communicate with them how they were pivoting and, you know, were they relocating, were they changing their hours of operation. And for us, you know, we send out not every single week, but a couple times a month, we send out a newsletter and it's informational, right? right? It's following the founder's journey, but then it's also opportunities to volunteer, opportunities to get freebies, you know, opportunities to come to events, right? Like cool stuff that's creating that engagement, that customer experience, that wow, that blow your mind experience. The what's and, going on in the neighborhood. Those yeah. kind of things are in there. Yeah. So and so that's the that's and then and then it's the closing connection, right? It's the now we're giving the customer their order, right? And it is how do we give them their order? Are we just giving to them, have a good day? You know, have a good day. You know, are we saying, here you go, I hope you love it. It's so great that you came in today. Hope to see you tomorrow. Or as Joe says, as Joe, our owner says, we'll see you tomorrow, you know, or like I say to customers, you know, thanks so much for your support. You know, you could have chosen to go anywhere. It means a lot to us that you came in today, right? And so it's like, how do you make that extra step, that extra wow? And then on top of that, there's other things that aren't about the customer um, cashier experience, but are just the things about, you know, uh, the quality of our products, mm -hmm. right? What we're offering to the, the customer, we want to make sure everything that we put out is a 10 out of 10. That means every single recipe is, you know, tried and tested. Right. You know, everybody on the staff has tested all the drinks, tasted them. We do rate rating systems. You know, we go back and forth. We figure out, okay, that's too many pumps. That's not enough pumps. You know, what about this flavor profile? Oh, this tastes too sweet, this not sweet enough, you know, until we dial it in, dial it in, and dial it in, and then we all agree, this is the bomb. We love this thing, right? We're like creating our avocado toast that we're like crazy, um, you know, well known for. Like now when I have the avocado toast, I can literally, if I ever have it and it's not the recipe the way it's supposed to be, I can immediately taste it, right? Because I know that our avocado is freshly made, freshly freshly made spread that's mashed, you know, regularly. It has certain ingredients mm -hmm. that are supposed to be in there. It's a certain flavor profile and it's very simple, but it's a, it's a recipe, right? And when it's not, when it, when they cut corners or they didn't put the whatever in, the line you know. or the whatever, immediately I'm calling them up. Hey, what's going on? This doesn't taste right. And we have a process. You have to have a double taster, right? Two people have to taste it and make sure wow we're giving up all our secrets well i want people to understand that there's intentionality behind it that we're going the extra mile this is what you don't see in a lot of places and this is what you get when you come to slack and this is what you get when you have founders like us behind the wheel right that care that care yeah that but not only care that are bringing business expertise and that intersection between that community organizing and that social entrepreneurship and that practical spirituality that we bring to everything that we do, that is, this is what we manifest out of that is a, like a crown jewel, iconic institution in your community that everybody you, loves and talks about the service. <laughs> they say it's so good, but it's not just good for no reason. There's right. a reason behind it. It is so funny how when we first put that avocado toast on the menu, people were like, avocado toast? Now? I love to see the elders. I love to see, you know, I know the, the older, yeah, I know. I see the elder church lady, right? 
Yes. We, we get the elder church lady from the neighborhood. Come, come in, in and go. We, you guys don't have, you know, well, I love Jack's next door, which of course we love. We Jax. love Jack's too. Jax is the iconic. It's the bomb. And, but Jax is. Give me some buttery grits. I love Jack. No, just kidding. Jax is the traditional breakfast, mm-hmm. right? That there's, that's not what we do. We're not the traditional right. breakfast, right? We're a coffee shop with extras. Yeah. And, you know, so they'll come, oh, you know, I was going to go to Jack's, but I'm not. Or, you know, I thought I was going to go to Jack's, but I'm here. You don't have, you know, what do you got? Oh, you don't have this. You don't have that. And we're like, no, ma'am, I'm sorry. We love Jack's. You know, by all means, go over there, get your coffee from us, go over there. Yeah. But then we'll be like, but have you tried our avocado toast? Oh, what's that? What's that? That's yeah. what avocado that. toast. Yeah. But then, and then, you know, flash forward 10 minutes and you go outside and they're sitting outside. And, you know, <laughs> they got the avocado. All, all over them. It, 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 is, it is a messy delight. Yeah, right? but it's, it's funny. Delight, but it's funny. It is it. funny. There is See. nobody who has had it that does not just rave about it, right? Right. And it's one of those things we take a lot of pride in. It makes yeah. us feel very happy. You know, it, it, it's affordable. It's healthy. It's delicious. We make it and, affordable. Well, yes, but don't don't go into the specifics of that. I'm not yes, compared comparatively by anywhere in the city. Yeah, have, you know, the most affordable avocado toast you can find. There's a few other things that I want to just cover though. On top of that, which is uh, quality control. Right. You know that we are going every day. To every location, not you and me personally, but our team is going every day to every location and constantly training and retraining, right? And you you get exhausted by this because you're primarily at the you have to, and, and you get exhausted by this because you'll come home every day and be like, oh, babe, so and so was doing it this way, and I had to show them the way that we do it, or you know, oh, this happened and I caught this, you know, and I I adjusted it. Or like right now, you know, I went in, we had a couple new hires and, you know, our shift lead, I pulled him outside and I said, you know, I was in there and I noticed that the new people were not welcoming customers. That's not okay. You know, we have to go back to the basics. Right. They do nothing. They have to welcome people. Right. That's their first one-on-one with us. It's like, you've got to learn that. Yeah. You're literally representing what we do in that first second. Right. And if you can't even... Say hello and welcome the customers then, and, be, and be excited to see them and actually like want to talk to them. You know, you get an opportunity to social people. What kind of job is that? That's amazing. Yeah. The, what are you doing here? And, you know, honestly, yeah. at the end of the day, and that's what I told the, the shift lead today. I said, look, you try and train these people. You can try and work with these people. Because some, I was talking about one of our um, existing uh, employees that's been here for a while, but then also some of the new employees. And so I was just pointing out some little things to fix up with them. But I also said, look, this is the way that we do what we do here. This is our standard that we expect here. And ultimately, after all this time, if we can't get these people to be in alignment with them, it's not a fit. And that's right. okay. Uh, there's nothing wrong with these people, but they're not a fit for what we do. We do. Because we need every single time not 99 times out of 100. Every single time. 100 out of 100. Stellar service. And we have so much pride in the fact that people recognize that and, uh, you know, talk about us in that way. So one of the other things that we take into consideration is how everything looks, right? Oh, my gosh. The customer experience, the standard of excellence, you know, extends into the overall visual experience. Right, it's supposed to visually delight. We are giving business one on one to people that are listening. I hope you guys are taking notes. Well, this is our trademark. Because yeah, we don't. Trademark. Yeah, I know, I but we don't mind. Them. Yeah, we don't mind giving this up. We would love this to be everywhere. We would love for you to hire us to come to you, <laughs> you to do that. or for you to license <laughs> our uh, us know, to come in. exactly and we one or the other. Have our trainers train your trainers. Wow, for a fee. Yes, but in the in the meantime, you could also just listen to this and yeah. try and take some nuggets. To your point, we're giving we're giving them the playbook. It's not a secret. We'd love to see more small businesses take on a black standard of excellence for their company as well. Um, but whether they're small or large, these are the things that are lacking. These are the things that are needed. But just closing out on this visually delight, right? Because right? you want to engage the senses. 
you want for people to come in and just be like, wow, you know, so yes, all of these exchanges with our employees and the way that we treat people is like the bulk of what we're doing. But the place also has to be glistening and smell good and look good and and be clean, right? And I love you know, when I hear that. This place always smells so good when I come here. Yeah. I go, oh my God, thank you. Yeah. Like, can, can you, I go, can I record that? Yeah, because we have our amazing candles um, that typically are burning in the cafe and people come in and they go, oh, it smells so and good. And our clean floors yeah, that are just that always are mopped. Mopped and all that stuff. But when you look around, you can see that this is a place that's well loved and well cared for, right? Pillows are fluffed and full and lined up straight, you know. We have our dirty and clean. We have our dirty and clean signs on each table. So you know that when you're sitting down at our table, it's clean. Or if it's dirty, that it needs to be clean. Right. You know, there's plants, you know, bringing that sort of lush, you know, uh, natural essence to what we're doing. Um, There's our bright yellow umbrellas and our tables, you know, that are, you know, making a statement, right? Um, there's all of our uh, taglines and visual branding all over the place. Coffee Community Connection, Coffee with the Cause, South LA Cafe. You have our, uh, our our iconic photo wall, you know, where you take a photo in front of our neon sign. You know, okay. that's part of the customer experience. How many new customers do we know and repeat customers that are taking a photo? You have our cups, you know, that are compostable cups and that have the logo um, uh, sleeve on it, you know, that look good. We talk about the staff. How do you put the cup together? It's not, we're not just throwing, throwing it in there. You want the, you want the South lay right where they see it each time they sip. Right. And when they share, because we work so hard to create shareable experiences, that's how we grow our following and our brand and our, and our customer bases by people sharing about their experience, right? So they're going to share about the wow, but they also want to create something that's shareable for their own social media content. Right. So we want to show them, hey, we take pride in what we do here and we think that we made something that's super cool and we made it easy for you to share and tell people about it by taking a photo of the cup or by standing in front of our sign or, you know, taking a photo with the backdrop of coffee community connection and the palm trees. Oh my God. Right? I mean, background. So these are all things that we take into consideration when we talk about the Slack service standard of excellence and what we do here at the cafe. And we want for everybody to understand how much it means to us that they love and respect what we do and that they see the excellence that we bring. But we want them to also just understand the intentionality behind it, that we're doing it for them. We're doing it because we're putting the community at the center of our business. And at the end of the day, our business is thriving and growing because of the strategies that we've done, because we've engaged the community and the community loves us so much that they keep engaging with us and they keep us growing our company. So that being said, as we wrap up um, the conversation around customer service and the, the Slack way of approaching that, what would you say your main takeaway of this conversation is or something we haven't discussed or something that you think for those listening in that you would want them to take with them? Uh, basically, what did I get from this? The main thing that sticks out is striving for excellence and then uh, continuing it to, to improve it. That's what I got out of this. It's like we want to strive for excellence. And then when we get there, we want to maintain it and then even take it to a higher level. That's what I got out of this. Simple to me. Well, yeah, it is. It really is. But if you think about it, it's like if, if everybody did it, I know it's not easy. And that's not my new thing. If if it was easy, everybody would do it. I know it's not easy, uh, but we do it anyway. We do it because we deserve it. Like, we deserve to have this nice place, or these nice places, all in our neighborhoods. Yeah, and I think that we are human, and we make mistakes. 
eight. And Absolutely. We don't always hit it out of the park, right? We strive for the 10 out of 10. We expect the 10 out of 10. We train for the 10 out of 10. We understand that sometimes it's going to be a 7, 8, 9. You know, we never want it to be a 5. We never want it to be a 1. And yet, at the same time, we understand every blue moon that's going to happen to, to everybody. Yeah. We would just ask for the community to have grace with us in those moments because what we, you know, even when that happens, you know, like, because I, I primarily manage and do our social media. So it'd be like, you might post something, um, 99.99% of the time, or, ah, oh, we love you. Oh, you're so great. This excellent, your standard is so great. Da, 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 da. Every once in a while, someone will say something, um, not necessarily negative, but like they didn't have the best experience. And then, you know, that's when we go out of our way to say to them, bring that to our attention. That would never be what we'd want you to that's not in alignment with and we address it for, and we address it right that's all we can do is we we're real we're human we make mistakes we take accountability and then we retrain and then we go back to the basics of all of the steps that we already went through and we keep going and we get better and we get better and we get more people that are taking it in and, and it's part of their culture um and i think that that's really really important for people to understand we're human we're working as hard as we can uh and yet at the same I'm, we're gonna make mistakes, and yeah, we hope that they have grace and patience with us when we do. Um, but at the same time, we hope that they understand that they're worthy of all of that and more. Right. Um, and so, as far as my uh, main lesson or takeaway for those listening, and I think that you know, thinking about this is our experience that we create. This is our steps that we're applying to our business. You know, what are your experience what is your experience you want to create for your customer you know what is or as a customer mm -hmm. what is the experience that you i was going to say you're asking the business the small businesses in the community what do they want to i would what we're trying to say no, is I, oh this is my closing okay okay oh got you got you got you do you want me to say it again yeah start over say okay. it again what i was saying is as my takeaway there we go from this conversation is that that people should expect to have an experience when they go to do business with them. That they are worthy of a full wheel experience right. from a beginning moment to a closing moment. All of those moments in between should have intentionality and should layer upon the next to create that overall wow experience. And if you're not getting that do not continue to patronize those companies if, and the companies that are giving you that, or at least you know that they are striving mm -hmm. to give you that. Those are the ones that you should patronize. And if you are a small business, then you need to really focus on putting the community at the center of what you're doing and thinking about the community experience, the community engagement experience. How can you up your service and not say that, you know, good is good enough or right. you know oh some people are going to like this some people are not no you want to strive for everybody to like you not as a, a person as a as a company as an experience so how can as a customer how can you up your game and expect more for yourself and stop patronizing the companies that are not giving their all and as a small business how can you up your game mm. and create a customer experience that is blowing their mind that is wow that is something that you know they can be at a dinner party and having a conversation about hey i went into this shop and you would not believe that they have a bunch of people that are from our neighborhood and they're so professional mm -hmm. they're so welcoming mm -hmm. you know they told me about all these cool things that are happening the the food and the drinks were amazing and on top of all of that, like, I can't wait to come back again. You know, that right. is the kind of thing that Slack is trying to be a trailblazer and a pioneer in. And that we hope that people who are listening know their worth, their value, and how they can step up and serve the community. Wow, you got a lot out of it. Did. <laughs> <laughs> Drop the mic. Are we done? Drop the mic. It's a wrap. Yes, yeah, a wrap. Hey fam, if you're hearing this message, you've listened to the entire episode of the In The Mix podcast. And for that, we want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts. 
We hope you enjoyed this new episode. And if you did, please take one minute to hit the subscribe button to catch all future episodes. And then please give us a five-star review. Also, if you want to support our Black and women-led multiracial movement to fight social, economic, racial, and food inequity, please head to our website, southlacafe.com, where you can become a monthly member, sponsor groceries, volunteer, buy merch and coffee, and make a tax-deductible donation. Sending you lots of peace, love, and blessings from our family to yours.